Hello everyone and welcome to Mike's Hidden Histories. I'm here in Bodenstown Graveyard in County Kildare on the east of Ireland to tell you about Theobald Wolfe Tone, who is regarded as the father of Irish Republicanism. He was a patriot in the 18th century. Now the Tone family connection with this part of County Kildare, particularly in Blackhall, uh, goes back to the mid 18th century when Theobald Wolfe Tone's grandfather uh, leased land here from the Wolf family and so began the, this connection. Now in turn, a 1762, uh, William's son Peter married uh, La Margaret Lampard. Now they lived in Dublin where Peter had a coach uh, building business um, and in the following year in 1763 in the 20th of June, Theobald uh, Wolf Tone was born. The family uh, lived that time in Bride Street, but they moved then to Stafford Street, which is now Wolftone Street in Dublin. Now, uh, on the death of uh, Theobald's grandfather, William, uh, his father, Peter, inherited the farm here. Now, he leased it to his brother for a while, uh, and uh, that was a very un, um, difficult relationship, as it turns out. In the end, when Peter's business began to fail, he moved back to the family farm here, but Theobald Wolftone stayed in Dublin to continue his studies. He entered Trinity in 1781 and while there in 1785 or um, shortly before, sometime before that he met his wife Matilda Witherington and uh, she was then known as Martha but changed her name to Matilda and in 1785 they eloped and got married. She was only 16, he was 22. Her family were very displeased with that. Anyway they moved back down here to live with, with Theobald Wolfstone's parents and in the following year 1786 um, their first child Marie was born. That was also the year that uh, Wolfstone graduated from Trinity College. Now in January 1787 he alone went to London to continue his studies and stayed there until December the, uh, uh, the uh, 1788 uh, when he returned here on Christmas Day. So at uh, that stage um, Matilda had come in for some money um, they moved to Dublin he practiced as a solicitor he was called to the bar in 1789 uh, they inherited a cottage here as well uh, in Blackhall near Bodenstown and Kildare here and they moved there and spent some time there from 1792 now that is a bit about his private life at this stage in 1792 he was also heavily involved in politics since uh, the middle of 1791 in fact he issued a pamphlet, uh, an argument on behalf of the Catholics of Ireland. And in October that year, he was one of the founders of the United Irishmen in Belfast, uh, which was mainly set up by Presbyterians, uh, who were enlightened um, people who wanted a separation from England, a complete separation. They wanted freedom for Catholics. And they very much followed the model of the American Revolution of 1775, but most importantly, perhaps the French Revolution of 1789, uh, looking for liberty, equality and fraternity. Uh, that organisation set up in Dublin again with some Catholics and Presbyterians uh, and uh, spread nationwide when many Catholics then joined. There was a parliament in Dublin, Grattan's Parliament. It had some powers. It was there since 1782. The United Irishmen was an open organisation. Um, and uh, until uh, 1793 when England and France were at war it was subsequently outlawed by the British government so it became a secret society. Now in 1794 Wolfone got himself into some trouble and implications in what was known as the uh, Jackson Affair. And this involved a, a group of people meeting secretly with uh, Reverend William Jackson, a few others and Wolfone and their plan was uh, the complete separation of Ireland from Britain with the assistance of French help. Now, these meetings uh, were betrayed uh, by a spy and uh, William Jackson was arrested and found guilty of treason and uh, he was to be hanged in 1795 but before uh, the date of his execution he committed suicide. Now, what about Wolf Tone? Wolf Tone was lucky in that he had a cousin, Sir Arthur Wolf, who was the uh, Chief Justice. He did a deal with the government uh, that if Tone and his family left the country, emigrated, not to come back, uh, the charges would be dropped. So in uh, 1795, 
Tone sold his Wolf Tone sold his cottage emigrated to uh, Philadelphia with his wife and family. So we find in 1796 that Tone is on the move again with Napper Tandy and others. He ends up in Paris. He wants a meeting with senior uh, officials and senior politicians in the French Directory, which was the name for the French government at that time. And he, amazingly, he secured an audience with one of the directors. And they were so impressed with him, in fact, that they made him an adjutant general in the French army. And he agreed to his plan to send assistance to uh, the Irish Revolution, which was to take place, to assist the United Irishmen. So on the 15th of December 1796, a large fleet left Brest, 43 ships, uh, 15, 14 and a half thousand men uh, set sail to, uh, for Bantry Bay. But unfortunately, a violent storm erupted. Many of the ships were separated. In fact, um, 12 ships were lost, 2,000 men were drowned, but the remainder did arrive in Bantry Bay with Wolf Tone on board. Uh, they waited and waited from the 22nd of December when they arrived to the 26th of December, uh, but there was no way they could land because the storm was so strong. So, uh, disappointingly, they had to up anchor and head back to Brest. So, uh, this now, of course, alerted the British government that the French were attempting to uh, assist the United Irishmen. So, a campaign of terror took place in 1797, all during that year, into 1798. Anyway, the, in some May 1798, the United Irish Rebellion did start and take place then. And on the 23rd of August uh, of that year, 1798, a second fleet, much smaller this time, only 1,074 men, under General Humbert lands in Killala Bay in County Mayo. Um, they come ashore and they defeat the British in Castle Bar, uh, but afterwards they were, uh, they they were overcome and had to surrender uh, uh, to General Lake and Lord Cornwallis. Now on board that ship actually was Wolf Tone's brother Matthew, who had gone to uh, France in 1794 and had become a captain of the French army. He was recognized and he was subsequently hanged in September 1798. The next attempt was in October uh, 1798 when General Bompart uh, arrives uh, off Donegal, uh, Lock Swilly. Uh, but unfortunately the, the uh, British Navy were well aware of what was happening and were waiting for him. And what was known as the Battle of Tory Island took place between the ships off Tory Island. Uh, uh, a number of ships were lost of the 12 ships that had sailed only three ever got back to uh, france um, they eventually had to surrender uh, those that weren't destroyed and on board one of them was wolf tone himself and he too was recognized and he was sent for trial in dublin uh, on the 8th of november 1798 and uh, he knew the end result uh, would be his death he did plead that he be shot like a soldier. This was denied. So his execution was set for the 12th of November. Uh, it was on that morning when his cell was open, uh, they found him with a very serious wound to his throat. He lingered on till the 19th of November, 1798, and he died on that day. And so ended uh, the revolution, I suppose, in Ireland, of, um, the United Irishmen's revolt or revolution, and the end of French assistance for that time. So uh, the, what did the British government do then? Well, they abolished the parliament that was in Dublin and they implemented direct rule from, uh, from Britain. So uh, uh, the island of Ireland became an integrated part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Now, to give some indication of the impact that, um, that uh, Wolf Tone had uh, at this time, no better a man than the Duke of Wellington, Arthur Wesley, who wrote the following, Wolf Tone was a most extraordinary man and his history is the most curious of this time. With a hundred guineas in his pocket, unknown, uh, unrecommended and without friends, he went to Paris and persuaded the French government to send an army of 15,000 men to overthrow the British authority in Ireland. This was an achievement of genius, so says the Duke of Wellington. So this is the story of Wolf Tone, um, uh, one of the greatest Irish patriots, the father of Irish republicanism. That's all from Mike's Hidden Histories this time. More next time.